Hey guys, Tammy Trier. Glenn Trier. With TrierWilderness.com. We wanted to get on here today um, and share some of God's miracles on our homestead. And there have been so many from our venture out here during our venture, as well as with our high functioning autistic son, the mountain boy. There were so many miracles there. That will be in another video of itself. But we wanted to share with you the the miracles that we've experienced over the last two years that are just so raw and so amazing and awing and they need to be shared. Um, our faith is very strong and God leads the way very heavily in our lives and I feel that I wouldn't be doing him a justice if I put these and myself under a basket and didn't let my light shine because these were f miracles that were so visibly seen and so incredible. So as many of you know, I was, I've been sick and you can go to our website and find out more about that with the details and the symptoms and everything at treyerwilderness.com slash our health journey. And you can go on our YouTube channel or go to treyerwilderness.com slash our health journey video and get all the details on that. I don't want to uh, beat a dead horse, but our miracle started with my illness. Um, I had been pro progressively getting sick, and in 2015, after delivering four cords of firewood with my son, I came back and I ended up with neuropathy in my arms and my hands and my legs. And it was it was it was drastic because it I went from lifting 85 pounds on a weight bench to not being able to pick up a canning jar with that much oatmeal in it. It it was crazy and. My illness was one of those that made medical doctors actually laugh at us, which didn't go over very well. And we knew that we couldn't really depend on the medical system for what I had going on because there were just too many symptoms and too much craziness. So what was really crazy through that is that God diagnosed me. And I know many of you aren't going to believe that and you're going to struggle with that, but I encourage you to listen and and hear us, hear our miracles. And, and you can leave your comments below. That's okay. You know, negative comments are fine. Just don't expect an answer or expect one that'll come with love because we love y'all. But God prompted me to purchase something called an ionic foot bath, which is used to remove toxins from the body. When it arrived, I found out I wasn't able to use it with my implants. So I ended up searching on the internet and the first thing that came up was my diagnosis and I sat there and cried because I've been sick was sick at that point for six years and progressively getting worse and we didn't know why so it all happened like that I ended up with neuropathy and like two days later I found out and God diagnosed me and what what happened is on on the Google search it said about breast implant illness and there were all my symptoms. So it was it was pretty amazing and pretty awing, but it just gets better from there. Um, that evening, um, I, I woke up at 1.30 in the morning, sat straight up, and felt very prompted to start searching for things related to the illness. And I started searching, and everything I searched for pulled up the doctor that I went to. And she's down in Georgia. Dr. Kolb and it was just really crazy. I just, I knew God was telling me she was who I needed to use. Her expertise and her abilities and her protocols were what I needed. And although we had struggles with family and friends, not really understanding all that and understanding my desire to go there and knew, knowing that that was my answer. Um, we still pushed on because we knew that that's what God wanted for us. And I, I still remember when I woke up that morning and I went to him and I said, I know where we need to, I know what I need to do. I know who I need to see. It was, <laughs> it was kind of weird too, because well, I shouldn't say weird because God, you know, God had his hand there. Um, you know, she said who she felt that God, you know, showed her who she should go to and I didn't I didn't question it I didn't I don't know it just it felt right it felt like you know that was who she was supposed to it wasn't 
Well, I don't know if this is right. Because she had looked into some other doctors and stuff too, and it just they didn't they didn't feel right. Uh -uh. Um, it just didn't seem right. And uh, so we uh, we were talking. And I was, well, I, I think you're right. I think you're. This is where God wants us to go. Yeah, it was so crazy. Thinking about it too, you know, your reaction to me, because I, I just looked him right in the face and said, I know where we need to go. I know, I know who my doctor is. And the other thing was the price tag. The price tag that went on that, you have to understand, we didn't have two pennies to rub together at the time. And um, to travel to Georgia and have this kind of surgery, it, it just didn't seem fathomable. And a day later, my friend Vicki Lynn decided to create a uh, fundraiser for us. And this is where it just gets really, you can just continue to see God's hand in all this. It's just, it was crazy. So the fundraiser was started and that was extremely humbling for us. Um, and a lesson learned from God, you know, we are supposed to... When you need, when you, for us, it's, we work for what we get, mm -hmm. and, and we're givers, and, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and it's hard to take from somebody, um, it's, uh, it just don't feel right. At least for me uh, mm -hmm. and for her, it mm -hmm. just it doesn't feel right to take something from somebody. I'd rather give somebody something than um, receive. <laughs> and it was like she was saying, it was kind of a God used it to open our eyes that sometimes we just we do need to receive. Yeah. We do need to. Now that doesn't mean you take it for granted and or take advantage and of take people. advantage of people and stuff. Right. It doesn't mean that, but it does. You know, you you. If somebody offers to help you, you uh, you take it. You know, it, it, it's it, not it's not being selfish or you know whatever. <laughs> Especially in situations like this, you know, you you need you can take it. It's not it's not it's a gift. It's a gift, yeah. And if you don't accept it, you're actually denying somebody else to bless you yeah. and that's the important part of the lesson for us was that we needed to learn to be except being blessed so it was it was quite something it was very humbling for us because like he, like we said we're usually on the giving end of things we enjoy being able to bless other people so knowing what kind of feeling we get when we bless somebody and realizing that we were denying somebody else the ability to do that for us and my friend Julie once told me that you need to learn to receive and that stuck in my head. So it was, it was definitely an interesting time, but we, we had gotten enough with that fundraiser to pay for our plane tickets and, um, the car rental, the car rental, some of our food yeah, and that was about it. yeah. And we got down there and we had $300 left in our checking account that was to cover the car rental when we left and our baggage. And we were down there for 17 days and that was the other blessing. A dear friend of ours, Pat, uh, was kind enough to gift us with our 17 day stay down in Georgia. And, you know, so it was just a constant trickle effect of seeing God's hand lining everything up for us. And, Another thing is that I was so I was so so sick, and we were so afraid that I wouldn't be able to sit straight as long as I needed to on the airplane to go from you know Washington to to Georgia. That my my sister in law and brother in law were kind enough to offer to gift us with an RV rental so that we could drive there. So one way or the other, they were getting me there, and. We did get there. I, I got very blessed on the airplane, too, because everywhere we sat, either there wasn't somebody between us or we had the extra space so I mm -hmm. could really stretch out. But, I mean, it was to the point when I got down to Georgia that I was almost in a wheelchair and, and needed to be taken around. I was really having problems getting around. 
So we're down there. We, I had my surgery and all went well. And the doctor wanted me to get three more prescriptions. And we went to the pharmacy. <laughs> Gonna try to get through this one. This one was pretty wild. <laughs> we get in there and <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> it it he, is really amazing though. I mean it's he he had to go to the restroom and I went over to the pharmacist and I asked how much the uh the medications were gonna cost and he said to me they were what were seven hundred and twenty one dollars and some odd cents and I just went, Oh my gosh, how are we gonna do that? We only have three hundred bucks to our name. So I, I held him and, and we also got a little bit of food that night. We were getting a couple things and he comes back out and I told him and he looked at me, which was really awesome because you could see God working through each of us for each other through this whole thing because it wasn't an easy time being sick and for him having to watch me. So, you know, being ill and he looks at me and he says, we've gotten this far on your on faith you've gotten this far on your faith why why stop now <laughs> like okay so we gave the guy the pharmacist the prescriptions and we walked into an empty aisle and we prayed got the things we needed and we went back up and he he called us up and he says i gave you a discount and we're like wow okay he rang it up and it was 200 and $71. <laughs> Needless to say, I stood there and cried. That's a huge discount. And that was that's God. What, that's, you know, that's... Power of faith. The power of faith, but also God answering prayer. Yeah. Um, but we only had $300. So, we're like, well, we got, you know, he gave us this. So let's get them and carry on so we carried on um went back to the motel and my parents come down and uh you gotta remember for, we needed that money for the rental car yeah, and our baggage home yeah. my parents come and as they were walking out the door um gave her slipped uh 150 bucks in her hand and um uh, not knowing not, our circumstances not, not knowing and then uh a little bit later, her parents came, and uh, they did the they did the same thing, hundred and hundred fifty bucks. So that was ended up being our three hundred dollars mm -hmm. to pay for the car rental and get our baggage on the plane and get back home. Yeah. That was, and then it wasn't what well, it wasn't quite three hundred dollars for all that. And we ended up with thirty-seven dollars in our Something, checking account. Yeah, because we ended up on the way home, um, the idler pulley on my truck, <laughs> half, almost halfway home, the idler, idler pulley on my truck, blew. And it so did. It we, blew up. <laughs> we, so we sat on the side of the road. Friend of ours, Jason, picked it up for us, brought it out. And we changed it there on the side of the road. And that, that, was, guy yeah, that guy stopped. That guy stopped and helped us. <laughs> but um, that was pretty much our three hundred dollars yep. right there. I mean, that's. But it was amazing to see that God, how God provided that, and yep. you know, people can say, uh, you know, well that was just a fluke and so on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there there there's so many things like that that happen. Um, in our lives, uh, one, she can tell it a little bit better cause I wasn't with it, but when I was, uh, oh, out of it, gosh, uh, yeah. I stopped breathing a couple times, <laughs> a couple, eight, <laughs> um, yeah, when he, he, sorry, he had taken a, uh, valerian root, um, to help him sleep, but he chewed it. And the you don't ever do that. Yeah, the coating, re, him chewing it made it react faster in his body, and what it ended up doing is causing the part of your brain that tells you to breathe to stop working. So 
he stopped breathing eight times before the ambulance arrived. And when the ambulance did arrive, they could, uh, they almost couldn't get an IV in him because his body was shutting down. And I wrote a post on that. I don't think we did a video on that, but you can read more on that. There was a lot of details there too, where 911 doesn't work out here. The sheriff's number came, didn't ring right. Okay. I had to call a friend okay. to call 911. He uh, called 911 and it went through the scanner and another friend started Facebook messaging me. It was just crazy. And the way God worked things out, it's just, and when you fell off the ladder, when we were, when we were building yeah, our house, building. I mean, that was quite a few years ago, but building the, yeah. building my, the house here, um, I was up on the ladder 16 feet and the ladder slid on me. I had things in to hold the ladder in place and I had just taken them out. I was coming down, taking them out and the ladder slid. Uh, but the other and, cool part to that was, this was one of the weird things. I was back in the mess tent grading Austin's paperwork and I just threw everything. I had no idea why I had this de instant desire to just run. Like I felt like I needed to run to him and I threw everything and started running. And as I was running across the yard, he yelled. And as I hit the corner of the house, he hit the ground. That, that was, was freaky. I hit, hit the ground and rolled. Um, but when I, when I stopped, I didn't roll that far cause the way I landed, but the, I had a board up on the side of the house that was using the gauge where my tin come down to and stuff. Anyways, um, there was screws in there. Uh, the blunt ends were sticking. The, the blunt ends were sticking up. One of them was, yeah, this is crazy. Like an inch down from my crotch. And one other one was on the other side of my leg, my right leg. And one, the other one was on the other side of my left leg. And, and one in the center. You yeah, had four that's what screws. I said, his, right at my crutch. And I mean, we're talking that much space on either side. I mean, and I. It, ugh. it didn't. It you know, I didn't hit that. I didn't. Well, I hit. I landed on basically one foot because when I jumped, I figured I'd jump and I'll hit and tuck and roll and, and go. Um, well, my one foot was out a little bit further and it caught. The last rung of the ladder and shoved the heel down well all my weight hit on that heel so it you know I, I, things didn't work like maybe that's I what stopped you I, from being impaled yeah but really <laughs> the long and short of it is is nothing happened um I, no broken bones no nothing it was crazy it was crazy that he was not impaled and on uh, we had a piece of steel about this long probably about the size of my like ring finger and pointed that we were using to pound holes in the steel i was pounding them down the ground and then if I, he had to adjust any he had one up on up there with him well it fell out of his nail bag and was laying this close to his side and i just picked that up and threw it across the yard and started bawling because i i mean it was just it was it was a miracle that he was not hurt you look back on it, um, oh. so many things that God's had his hand on and miracles that God has worked. Um, we had, you know, just getting in the house, you know, the miracles that God worked mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, people say miracles don't happen. You know, that's not true. And, and, and you know, things don't happen anymore. Like Christians will say... Um, some Christians believe that, you know, miracles don't happen anymore and, and God don't answer prayer like he used to and, and so on. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't, he doesn't change just, he, he he's, he's the same People have as changed. he was forever. And the miracles he did before can still be done today. Yes. It's just a lot of times we're not open to them miracles. We're not open to God showing us these miracles because we've got blinders on that, you know, like I said, some people believe it. Well, this stuff doesn't happen. Well, open your eyes and, and allow God to do these things, yeah. um, work these miracles. The, the big thing is having faith and believing in that faith. 
There are so many people that say they have faith and hope in God, but they don't really believe it themselves. Like it's, it's a hard issue. You know, um, I believe that God exists. I don't need to see him. I don't need to feel him. I just know he's there and I trust in that. And, and I want to encourage, you know, some people are looking for that feeling that God touches you or that you, or that he talks to you. I always was seeking a relationship with God. I heard people saying how God talks to me and I wanted that so bad, but, um, it's actually a sin to want to be like somebody else. So I, I stopped that and I, I just prayed for that relationship with God. I wanted that relationship with God. And during, during my sickness, I did, I did feel him and I did hear him and I, I did communicate with him. And that was the most awing experience I can, I, I, I've ever had one so, time. Cause that time when I was in bed and I was feeling that heat so yeah. bad, I'd, I'd get before my surgery, I'd get really bad heat through my body. It felt like my legs and my arms were on fire. Well, that heat, as I was progressing and really getting really, really sick, we were really afraid I wasn't going to make it to my surgery because my organs were shutting down. I felt that heat moving up into my chest and into my, like into my heart. It just, it was moving and I, it was scary. And I just asked God to please give me a sign that I was going to be okay before, till this surgery. Please make this heat go away. And and if you're there, touch my hand. And I had my hand hanging off the bed. And my hand got heavy. And I didn't have that heat anymore to, at all. It, it went away. And I had that for over a year of that heat that would just kick in. And it was gone. It never came back. So People, you know, uh, some people say, well, you know, I don't believe in God. I, I can't see him. Right. You know, I can't see, I can't see God. I don't believe it. Well, you, the wind's there. You know it's there. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can feel it, but you can't see it. So what's the difference? You believe that the wind's there. And you don't question and it. And you don't question it. But you question <laughs> that God's real. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. You have you have faith that the wind's there. You know the wind's there. You believe it's there. You can't see it. Yeah. And you say, well, you can't feel God. Well, miracles. And are, they happen. They do happen. I'm really proud out loud right now to share my faith. I don't want people... To, I share my faith openly. I... I don't ever want anybody to feel like I'm shoving Jesus down your throat, but I want you to know what I'm experiencing and what we've experienced and that it, you could experience it too. And so, you know, if that's your interpretation, it's, that's not how we're meaning this. We're just meaning to share our love for Jesus and what he's done in our lives with you. And it gets even better the miracles in our home really hit top of the charts on March 24th. I have been sick for the last three or four months with all the moisture in our area from the mold. Um, it just was making me very, very sick. Through this process, I've had a, a year and a half or more of healing from this illness. So, you know, my surgery was a year ago in January, but I still had to progress and I went through a really rough three months and I was doing two treatments on the 24th of March and I decided to pray over my body and ask God to heal me and to remove this illness from my body. And I happened to be listening to a Todd White podcast at the same time and in his podcast he prayed over his audience asking for healing and it was a Friday night which was kind of funny because in his podcast it was pre-recorded but he's very powerful and he's got some really awesome things to share and, and there's yeah something about quick about that um there's some people that no he's not whatever and you know how how do you explain the miracles that happen with him you know if he's not God's not working through him. 
Um, it's just unreal, but that's a whole different subject. <laughs> but you can't go by how he looks and stuff. He's amazing. I really enjoy listening to him. I gained so much inspiration from him. Anyways. But I was I was listening to him, and he prayed over his audience, and he said throughout the weekend, you will, you will receive full healing. And I came... I came over to him after my treatments and I said, God just healed me. After I had prayed over myself, I really felt something kind of come over me. No, I shouldn't say kind of, but it just, a piece, right? it was a piece. It was, I believed, I believed that he healed me. And as the weekend progressed and you have to understand, I've been so limited and I have been so sick and I started progressively feeling better, but I told him, I said, God just healed me. And it was the same as when I told you. Really, you reacted the same as when I told you that I need a doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you had the same expression and everything. But yesterday, which was what? April 1st. I cleaned our house. And you're going to, this is going to sound really funny, but I was really excited about it because it's the first in a year and a half that I could clean my house without being stuck on a couch or in my bed for three days afterwards because I did too much and I would have never been able to do what I did yesterday. She I was would have... climbing around on stuff like a monkey and <laughs> she was cleaning stuff way up high and stuff. I, she I couldn't move like that. My flexibility wasn't good. My equilibrium wasn't good. My abdominal area was still swollen some because of all the toxins and it was just crazy, and it was really funny because I was climbing up on a stool, and as I was climbing up on a stool, he was passing by me, and it just made me kind of chuckle. It was just timing. I just remembered it, and I was just kind of inside celebrating that I had the strength in my leg to push myself up like that. And last night, he says to me, you were climbing all over the place, and it was just really funny because he noticed too. It was, it's just, it's amazing. God it has healed me. It was, it was awesome to see it, was, it, it really was to, to to see her you know go from not being able to do anything to you know doing stuff like that i mean it was those those days before she prayed um i almost went to the hospital she she couldn't yeah, you know, she could do stuff and that don't get me wrong she could do stuff but she couldn't do things that she normally before this illness could have done right. um there's just no way and i had like a, a time frame like even i have a standing desk and there are times when i couldn't stand in front of that because my legs would just get sore and it wouldn't it'd be for several days after that you know she'd do something and i'd pay several, the price yeah for several days after that she'd be so sore and so sick yeah it just affected me in such bad ways so it was just so amazing. So, you know, don't deny yourself the miracles that are out there. You've got to believe. And it, it says that in the Bible. It says that you've got to believe in what you've prayed for it to come true. So you've got to, you've got to really embrace this. Yeah, and it's more, you know, the believe thing, you know, people say, well, I believe in God. Well, the demons believe in God. Um, you know, they believe God's real. They know he's real. So, you know, you can believe God. Yeah, God's there. Woohoo. You know. But you got to believe you gotta, that he can do what yeah. he can do. And and he can. I've I've seen it with my son. I will do another video on that for all of you folks out there with autistic children because there's a lot of things you can do to help them. And it's just been amazing. And God's hand has been on us in such a big way from the day we've met. Truly from the day we've met. Mm -hmm. If you I I just published my book in January, How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle. You can find it on Amazon or by going to treyerwilderness.com slash embrace off grid book. But the reason I'm saying that is the first chapter is our is our introduction and it tells our story. And God has had his hand on us from the day we met. So well God has had it planned <laughs> way before that. Way before, before we knew we all were, about it. Before we were ever born. <laughs> but we wanted to take the time to share this with you guys. This is real. 
and I God, look forward. God is real. God is real, and what, like I said, I can't not be proud out loud about His hand in our lives because it's just too great, and you needed to hear it. So, those are just a few little miracles. I mean, there's a <laughs> long, long, long list, list of, of miracles that we could go on and on and on. Um, but uh, we just wanted to share that with you and let you know, you know, our faith is strong and God's real. Um, if anybody has any questions or anything about God and wants to know a little bit, we'll uh, just let us know and we'll... We'll share our faith and what we believe and um, try and help you out. Uh, so, yeah. yes. Feel free to email us at survive at com. At this point, you still don't believe us that there's a God. There's not much more we can say that will convince you that there is one. It's something that you're going to have to gain on your own. And we encourage you to do that. But... I feel really blessed that God used me as a vessel to help other people. We've helped save 13 lives that we're aware of that have reached out to us from my uh, video on my health journey. And I'm a true believer that everything happens for a reason. And like I said, I feel very blessed to have been used as a vessel to inspire and help others. And... I I like the challenges because I know that when we're on the other side of the challenge and the valley and the and the ugly places that we end up in life that there's a lot of growth and there's a lot of lessons learned and there's always a lot of blessings. So if there isn't a test in your life, you don't have a testimony. You need the test to have a testimony. So I encourage you to embrace those tests in your life, those valleys, those dark places, and call upon God to help you get through them and grow, and then share it. Be a light to other people, and be a blessing to others by sharing your stories and your miracles too. Don't be a part-time Christian, and don't be a silent Christian, and don't put your light under a basket. Be a light to others and, and embrace your faith. That's my, my wish for you. And we just thank you for joining us and listening to our blessings and, and hope it's encouraged you. And we would love to hear your, your miracles and stories. Feel free to email us at survive at treyerwilderness.com or leave them in the comments. Our God is good and mighty and shows us all mercy. And... I just am so thankful for his hand in our, in our family. So, so thankful. So. Well, with that being said, God bless. God bless. And embrace your miracles and yeah. share them. Open <laughs> your eyes, see them, and share them. And we'll catch you later. God bless.